Hello guys, welcome to my channel. This is the 17th tutorial in this course and in this tutorial we are going to continue our discussion on operators and discuss the logical operators that are available to us uh, in SQL and uh, firstly we need to know what logical operators are used for. So as you can see on the slide, logical operators are used to create complex query conditions and what I mean by this is if you're not satisfied with the you know conditions that you uh, can create using the relational operators or the arithmetic operators then you know you need to use logical operators to sort of combine conditions or to you know um, enhance their capabilities so to speak and uh, we're gonna see how logical operators allow us to do all of that in just a moment before that let's check out the types of logical operators that we have in SQL so um, so on the screen you see the list we have all and between in like or and is null these are uh, some of the logical operators that uh, you have in SQL and I haven't mentioned all the operators uh, in the presentation we'll be discussing some later on but for the time being these are all you need to know and uh, we'll be using these uh, most frequently and uh, no matter what you want to do in SQL you would be able to achieve uh, whatever you want to do with these uh, logical operators there would hardly be an occasion where you would want to use something like exists right so uh, let's check out the applications of these operators in the MySQL environment so I've got my workbench here and in the test database I have the employee table that I have been using for the last couple of tutorials and uh, you know I made a few more modifications to the data in the table I haven't changed the data present in the table already but I have added a few rows and uh, you know before I do anything let me show you guys the structure of the table as well as the data that's present in the table right so to display the structure I'll use the DESC command and type the name of the table which is employee and uh, there you go you see that the table currently has uh, five fields ID name age email and salary ID is the primary key so it has to have a different value in each record and uh, name and email are uh, variable character fields age is an integer field and uh, salary is a decimal field right and uh, another thing that we need to see is the data that's present in the table so to find out that I'll use the select query and uh, the, the command is going to be select star and uh, from name of the table which is employee and I'll put in a semicolon and control enter yields us the records that we have in the table so if you guys remember till the last tutorial the table had 15 records but it has more than 15 now so it's got 18 records uh, and you can find that out by checking out the values in the ID field and I haven't skipped any numbers so we have values uh, from ID equals 1900 to ID equals 1917 right so that means we've got 18 uh, rows in the table and uh, you know these three four rows I added um, you know after three rows actually I added uh, after the last tutorial to demonstrate some of the logical operators uh, in this tutorial right so without ado let's uh, get started with our discussion on logical operators so the first one that we're going to check out is the logical AND operator and the logical AND operator allows you to combine two conditions in the WHERE clause so let's say if you want to find out the uh, details of all employees who are uh, more than 30 years old and uh, also have a salary less than 25,000 so the way you're going to do that is by typing the keyword select first and uh, since we want to find out values in all fields I'll put in the asterisk operator right and uh, then I'll type in the keyword from and the name of the table which is employee and uh, then I'll type in the keyword where right because you have to use a where clause to specify the conditions that you have to place in your query and uh, then I'll type in the first condition which is that the age has to be greater than or equal to 30 and uh, then I'll type in the second condition which is salary has to be less than or equal to 25,000 right but if I execute this query just the way it is right now I'm going to get an error and you can see that you know uh, my SQL is already indicating that to you through this you know red um, cross symbol that you are seeing on line number three right so what you need to do to make this query perfect is you know you need to put in the keyword and here so and operator is going to tell SQL that you know you have to fetch 
all those records to satisfy this condition as well as this condition. So both conditions need to be satisfied and uh, only the rows that satisfy both the conditions would be returned in the output, right? So I'll press and control enter and there you go, you see that there are two records in the table that satisfy both the conditions. So Roger and Jim both have age greater than 30 as well as salaries less than 25,000. Right, so that's the first logical operator for you. And uh, the next one that we're gonna check out is the OR operator. What OR does is, it makes it necessary for one of the two conditions to be true, right? And uh, you can place as many conditions as you want in the WHERE clause, and you know you can combine as many conditions you want using the AND and uh, OR logical operators, but you know if you're using AND, then all the conditions that you've spec specified need to you know be true. Whereas if you're using OR, then you know even if any one condition out of the many conditions that you've placed uh, evaluates to true, then um, the query is going to result into some output, right? So I'll type in the keyword OR here to demonstrate what the effect of this is. I'll press Control Enter, and there you go. You see that this time we get quite a lot of records in the output, right? So we have. Uh, all these values, you know, John has uh, age 22, which is less than 30, but the reason why John is being displayed in the result set is because John's salary is less than 25,000, right? And then Peter again has an age less than 24, but Peter is being displayed because Peter's salary is also less than 25,000. Let's find out, you know, uh, example where the age is greater than 30, but the salary is uh, greater than 25,000, right? So, Wait a second, as you can see here, you know, the salary for uh, Pete is greater than 25,000. The salary is 27,480, but Pete is being displayed in the results set because uh, Pete's age is uh, greater than 30, right? So either this condition has to evaluate to true or this condition has to evaluate to true. If anyone evaluates to true, then the row is going to be there in the results set, right? So that's about or operator. The next one that we're going to check out is the not null operator. And uh, before demonstrating that, I'm going to display the results set to you, sorry, the, uh, you know, data in the table to you guys uh, once more. So to do that, I type in select star from employee. And uh, I want to show you guys the last row in the table, or not the last row, but the third last row, you know, row with ID 1915. You know, the name of the employee is Kurt, and the age is 34, the email address is Kurt at the rate of gmail.com, and in the salary column, I don't have any value, right? So in case you do not have any value, like no value, you call that null value, right? So the salary field for the record with ID 1915 currently has null value, and uh, the operator is null, allows you to detect all rows that have, uh, you know, the null value, you know, in some column, right? So what we're going to do in the next query is find out, you know, the details of uh, the employee whose salary is null, right? So in other words, we're going to find out details about Kurt. And to do that, I'll type in select star and then from, and then uh, the name of the table, which is employee. And uh, on the next line, I'll type in the keyword where, and then the column on which we want to use the is null operator. And uh, then I'll just type it is null, right? I'll put in a semicolon. When I press the enter key, I see that I get just one row in the result set. And uh, that is the row for uh, Kurt. The ID is 1915, age is 34, and the email address is kurt at gmail.com. The last logical operator that we're going to check out in this tutorial, the remaining we're going to check out later on, is the like operator. And uh, like, uh, is a very interesting operator and you'll be using it quite a lot and you'll also have a lot of fun using the like operator. Let's say you want to find out uh, details of all employees whose uh, name starts with the alphabet M or uh, you know name starts with the alphabet P, right? So the way you're going to obtain those uh, records is of course you'll have to use the select query because you're pulling data out of the table and uh, since you want all details I'll use the asterisk operator again here from the name of the table, which is employee, and then where you type in the name field, because we want to apply the like operator on the name field, and uh, then you type in the keyword like, and then within single quotes, since name is a character field, you know, you'll have to make your value comparisons by putting your value in the condition between single quotes. You type in the alphabet 
with which you want to compare. So in this case, since I want to find out names starting with the alphabet P, I'll type in P first, and then I'll type in the percentage symbol. So percentage here is a wildcard character, and it means that you know it's a substitution for anything, right? So what this condition is going to do is it's going to instruct SQL to find out names that start with P and have you know anything after P, right? So the name could be Peter or Pete or you know anything the values would be displayed as long as the name starts with P. And I'll put in a semicolon at the end to terminate the statement, and I press Control Enter. There you go, I see that in the results set. I have three rows. First one with ID 1901, the second one with 1910, and then 913, and the name that's, that's, you know, that should grab your attention. The name of the first row is Peter, the second row is Philip, and the third row is Pete. Right, so you get three results in the results set. And uh, the remaining logical operators that we are supposed to discuss, I'm going to discuss them in the next tutorial because uh, this one's getting a bit lengthy. So I hope you guys had fun watching this one. Please subscribe to my channel in case you haven't already, and I'm going to see you soon.